right now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Imperator Rome and Victus Saba here on our Lord Master channel. Well, in the last episode, we had quite a bit of an adventure. Went into the unknown lands of Iberia and acquired some treasures from them, particularly ones for personal use, and among other things, including uh, that we built the uh, lighthouse and Pharos in Alexandria which gives us some more naval related benefits. But Navy is going to become a less of a priority in this episode. Because all the uh, orders to build and expand our existing navies have been completed. And now we're going to turn our attention to another region that deserves you know, our attention in a way. And that is against Kush. Because we do have claims for all of Upper Nubia. Crazy exception of that part. Oh. And which now requires that um, we tell them to say, hey, our road um, building was interrupted. So we will finish this road construction project all the way to down there in the uh, center of a swamp. So you'll get back to work. While well, meanwhile, continue to gather the food for our armies. Because soon they're going to be redeployed. All of them. Yes, we're siphoning some of that food from them. Because it's a bit of my winter, which also hurts the welcome my food modifier. Because of course. Give him another aqueduct. Because, you know, there's room for all. This will help you. And I will turn the provincial loyalty around, finally. Y'all be ready for departure soon. And you know our main three, the way it consists is we use galleys for the flanks, next areas, and as primary and secondary is our heavy ships from behind. So honestly, I don't think we see any use for them as part of the Navy. I think we're switching naval doctrine since these light ships, except for the galleys. Libertarians are rest of priority, as it would be similar to this one for our other navy, which is to um, be used as a deterrent against the Parthian navy, should they ever come to attack us. So I think you should stick with them from now on, because we need to carry this large body of humanity <laughs> to get them to. Um, the only port on this side of Punt, so we can get them to Axum, get them into position, so we can be ready for the offensive for um, Upper Nubia, to try to capture all of it as we can. And we'll use our transfer fleet to defeat, you know, their small navy, which they only have their only port there. There are no ports in the Nile, on this part of the Nile anyway, so we can't use our navy there to blockade them. But perhaps in future, when we take, particularly here in, um, in Midway, in Muru, that's where I plan to build a one port there. So we, that way we can have the naval range that we can travel all of the Nile. 
fast transport as an alternative to going down the road. And of course, there's a real possibility that we might have a provincial rebellion in our hands. Because, damn it, damn it, damn it, I've neglected all of you people. I apologize for that. My son. Again, I want to make him a great warrior because... Look at me. I got zeal. Most finesse, more monster than charisma and zeal. Because I have the divine spoon. I have the armor of Achilles. And I have an axe. And a tribal helmet. And look where this gets me. None like it before or since. Due time, I'm about to become the master of diplomacy. I'm going to become the master of diplomacy, and then once I'm done, I'm actually going to go for zeal focus. Because look where it gets me. Free province investment. That's for one. Like I'm like, why didn't I think of that earlier in previous episodes? Civilization, conversions, more zeal stage. This side, Zeal. Reduce DFI. Faster population conversion speed to our faith. More stability. And if I'm going to be living long enough, culture and group happiness. Philosopher King. I'm only 43 years old and I got plenty of years ahead of me, so Zeal would make more sense to me. I got lots of it. And when you have high zeal, that means um, your stability change will be going up. Huh. It will always be about 50. You are cautious. Don't like that. Plus, once Kush is dealt with, I will indeed start integrating all the Egyptian entities. So for future reference, I'm going to start improving relations with all of you. do the same for uh, Saranaika because so uh, that way uh, so you know we do have a claim on that region that province I should say because that is part of that We can integrate Megabaria soon, but we'll do that as soon as war is declared against Kush. Because I'm trying to reduce the number of subjects while I look for new ones. Particularly those over there, because Carthage has not bothered re trying to retake them. And we did our best to improve our relations with them. I don't, don't want to be part of it, at least not yet, but there are ways to get them improved. But I think it would work if we also integrate this Nika, so we should do that as well. All of this, including you down there, will all be integrated. And this will definitely jump up the number of territories that Arabia will have, and subsequently, we will become an empire. Which to do that, I have to get the popularity 
up to 90, which shouldn't be too hard because look at me. I'm the most charismatic to have ever lived. Very soon, I'll be the master of the global scene. And I can get popularity easy. Just win a war or two. Win a like win a war against Kush and also likely that uh, provincial rebellion. Since it's going to affect all of them. Not to mention more pops in here. Because, you know, let's do that math. 10, 73, that's 83. Plus this amount, plus that amount. That means over 2,000, and you would be around 9,000 plus. And I know some of you people are wondering, hey, should you try to get import some trade routes in for this at the beginning of this episode? I would, but look. In six months' time, Parthia might go into the Civil War, and I have a part in, in that because I inspired one of their powerful people in there with disloyalty. And if this is true, our commerce economy, our income from commerce will be shot and then we're gonna have to make do with, with that. So it's gonna end up like the Romans. And we know that Roman civil wars last decades. And a Parthian civil war could last a decade. But it will definitely make them feel relieved as they did expand all the way up to Tania, uh, Tania Majoris. So. We'll see how this goes. And I do have a trick up of my sleeve against Kush. And of course, there's the Curse of Mahat Revolt. Which all I can say about you people down here is, hey, we didn't do it. We didn't do wrong with you, so... Maybe you should come in and be a client and say, we'll integrate you too. Maybe. Can't guarantee it. And also trying to improve relations with our former trading partner. So, we're, just, we're trying to improve relations with them. Because we sacked your holy sites. And then I'm about to send you a gift as a way of, you know, forgiving. It's a start. So, shall we have good trade relations again? Which again? We're sorry to wreck your things. We finally wrapped up on the Mandubian Civil War then. Carthage isn't ready to go into revolt, but one would think that there will be a day where they strike back. That's Levy, you dummy. This Biblos is going home. Guess everyone is supplied. Good. All aboard! Going to point. Get this 
stepping. I need you to finish that road. Legion maintenance cost. By the way, that got me to think. Since we have contacts with basically everyone in the world, do we have contact with Catania? Yes. Because I remember seeing one, and I'm not tempted to do this. There's this golden cape all the way up there. This golden cape is to increase the prestige of its wear by tenfold. Not really sure why, but it does. And you know, we didn't take much in the way of attrition damage on the way up there. But do you think next time we should get more bolder and head far up there? To acquire another personal artifact? Again, it's pretty ridiculous at this point. So many fancy treasures out there. You know, what about the ones over in India? helmet. Well, yes, it's confirmed Parthia will go into civil war, and there's not a damn thing they can do about it. Even Moria is in revolt, too, largely. Occupied, occupied. They're basically screwed. Get on and board it, buddy. Come on. Alright. It's a point. Once you arrive there, get to your positions. right there. You're not going anywhere. You'll not participate in the war. Confirmed. Large sway of Parthian territory has revolted. We lost a lot of good things from there. So it's said uh, most of the trade's gonna come from the Parthian revolt. As far as we're concerned, the Parthian Revolt has more pops than Loyalist Parthian. So, please wait. Yes. So we lost all the trade. Damn. Where did you... Anyways.
Guess we could start over from scratch. Part of the interval is the Cinnabar. We need camels. You know what to save the trouble, just get it from here locally. Olives. Get them from Cyprus. What else? Honey. Honey, 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 honey. Get it from Judea, locally. Again, I'm saving myself the trouble. We need dates. Dates gives you commerce bonus. Get it from Asia. Wild game. That's Archer's discipline. Stones. Get the stones from Egypt. Hemp. That's for our ships. Get it from Sparta. Anything else? Iron. That's for heavy infantry discipline. Get it from Chola. Glass. Get it locally. Save yourself the trouble. Anything else? Step horses, of course. Get one from Bactria, and the other from um, Yazgia. There we go. <sighs> and as for everything else regarding all of these. Again, you're big enough to have a metropolis now. Yeah, a great temple. I don't know why we don't have that as of yet, but we can't build a metropolis because we don't have enough political influence, which I'm trying to get some of that back. Oh, get us some precious metals. Don't do too much of it. Because, you know, that's enough for your little wonder here. One more stone from there. At least you got your wood, but get some more wood elsewhere. Sorry, we could still maintain it. All the pops are happy anyhow. Oh, hell. I just noticed that right now. Get it all from Egypt. You got lots of grain. You know, there are better ways to do this, you know. And how to get more food. No wonder. There was seemingly lack of it. Get us some markets for a possibility of more import routes. So 
practically, we've somehow overlooked this. Another one. For more mo local monthly food modifier. So, it was a bad oversight on my part. It's almost like Hajimut is the worst place to, to be in. It would be considered, arguably, as Arabia's soft underbelly. All the more reasons why we gotta have more granaries. Go to places that's less likely to revolt. That's where wishful thinking. Punt, however, how's their situation? Other than Arash, of course. Give them a bit more wood for Punt. Take the trade good. Skip one from there. From the vault for once. Hey, move one, pup. What for? Build another port. You get tier five. You get to build heavy ships from there. I think you're doing all right. Oh my goodness, it is in shambles regarding the commerce because uh, Parthia was been such a good trading partner. We're running out of trade partners, and the only other suitable place trade of is the Parthian Revolt, which situation is ever changing up there. So again, I, it's a good thing that Parthia is revolting, but um, you just done, you know, you just done did a silly thing. Just trade valuables, alright? Anything that would do us good for the balance. Axum could become an issue in a later time. I think we should start giving them things that would be increasing the slave happiness. Like stones, which there's lots of it. Everybody else seems happy. Stone, 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 stone. I'll slow them down. Ha. Ah. Does have a great job. Get a yeah. Meanwhile, just do whatever it takes. Wherever you get them from, just get them. Get 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 get. Anything that's gonna make us rich again. Unless we're gonna be having food shortages.
Give up the stones. I mean, if you can convert the areas, that's fine. You do over there. You're gonna be another issue. You're gonna be a problem. Big time! More stones. Do what little you can. Or maybe a matter of time. What's your excuse? You know, we haven't been doing a good job watching over you. But we can fix that. Slaves will always be unhappy no matter what, so we'll always bring in stones in vain. Huh? Give them a market. Same. Need more import routes in places that do deserve them. Because it's what we need to do in order to get things right. Anyways. Again, I don't want to import every single thing. As much as, um, you know, make sure that provinces don't starve and they don't get angry with us. Oh, hell. Base models. Give another one of that. We need some green. That's one of my, you know, least cared provinces, so I'm willing to th throw food at it over there. Oh yeah, this is a place of strategic value in case of Parthian attack and they want to go through the corridor. Well, let's give him another obstacle. Build up another fort. Canaan is a pretty contentious place, but I think everybody's getting on all right. Now here in Gaza, where we can build, have the ability to build medium ships now. Move pop. And then after that, build an aqueduct to increase population capacity. Papyrus is pretty valuable. Build a foundry here. Now, again. I think they're a good standing, but again, I'm not going to be too intense about what goes on out there with the ongoing Parthian revolt. As much as I would like to take advantage of that situation, then we'll, you know, give it a try. So I think we spent enough time on investing on constructions and a few other things. 
Again, we should be all right. All right, speaking of investing, let's continue to build that road, resume it back to where we were. Head to work. And remember, Babylonia is the heart of Parthia, but they're not going to attack us anytime soon because I caused some, you know, shit stirring over there. Just what's causing that revolt over there. So that'll keep it busy while I can focus on Kush. Egyptian entities. Uh, now Carthage seems to attempt to attack us. They want revenge. All the more reasons why we gotta have them as client states. That's my father. My estranged father. He was the general of the first you know, legion in Arabia. He is now without its commander. Which we can appoint whomever we want. But I would prefer somebody who's more loyal. Minor character. Sabi in Arabic. Perfect. So he's pretty good. You know what? Matter of fact, based on the standards. Eight is like an average. Fifteen, which is the highest that you can get, although you can go beyond that, is what we consider it as excellent. And you know, one is bad. So, in a way, eight plus eight is sixteen. So I would put eight as an average. So, anything less than eight is considered poor. Or not so good. <laughs> So, and keep in mind, this isn't a legion, as much as it's a, a loose mercenary band. You know, we can't send you adventuring, but, but still, it has its uses. But when you're done, we're going to go pick you up as well. Get to your positions. I should stay in the back. Even though the skills of Marshall has been improved. And you stay in your position. And put yourself in better, Nika. Because when they're done with the road building, go pick them up. We ain't starting a war without them.
Start going. about the Republic, I wish I could do something about them over there. Lost the wood, but you should be alright. No, you are not big, Aran. Also, you're fired and not fired. We lost the fruits. Quick! That gives me loyalty of characters. No, not Kush. Hold on. As I stated. Diplomatic master, and that makes me the master of diplomacy. That's plus three charisma with uh, a diplomatic reputation up a bit, and diplomatic relations plus two. Thus, we'll take a bit of a less penalty over the diplomatic limit, I believe. Uh, divinity focus. So, we'll focus on all these things. So as I said, I'll stay in the back to try to take care of this uh, rebellion out there. Crap, that's the Cinnabar. This back end part the hands. You know, there's only well, look again for Cinnabar. is where you find them. The only other place in the world that's out there, like Armenia has it. You know, Romans have them. You guys have them. Unfortunately, Carthage has them. Glass, that's what we lost. He was the Tribune, but not deployed Tribune, that's different. He's almost done. So we're waiting for you to finish your road work and then get to, get to us, and then we'll begin our offensive.
next August. I don't know. It doesn't look it doesn't look good for you. And I see that their legion is up there, and they got a bunch of them. Chaldea. So yeah, they're going on the offensive down to Mesopotamia. Finished! Alright. Get to us. the wine and the cinnabar again which means the cinnabars is now falling back to rebel hands and what the hell else did we lose wine we'll get it from sparta where it's safer there goes the glass again get something else who are you something else that can benefit you in the long run Like, oh, I don't know, reduce tyranny, maybe? Eh. Output, happiness, civilization. We lose another one, like say another that glass import. Then I'd be willing to uh, switch it over. Yeah, I think I know where I'm going to deploy that legion point. They should be the ones to back me up to take care of that provincial rebellion while concurrently going to war against Kush. So let them drill for about at least a couple more months before we can begin. Get down here. Get myself into position. And you guys want livestock? We got lots of them. Fighting is everywhere. And it seems that there might be a good chance that the Roman Revolt might win for once. Because they're the ones, the aristocratic and the loyalists are the ones with the theocratic. Whereas Carthage is eager for revenge against us one day. could never integrate Upper Egypt in time. That takes nearly a hundred years. That's all because of the sheer size of the country. Look. We'll never integrate Upper Egypt. Well, I guess that means you will permanently be a part of Arabia in a way as a client state due to your sheer numbers that would help us out in future wars so I guess uh, you will remain as you are because I would have loved to have all of these pops moving in but now it seems impossible 
because that takes nearly a hundred years to integrate. I think you're better off integrating the Saranaika, which at least that takes some years, so... Well, get to work! Unless we get some lucky events out of this. Although there are ways to increase it. Like, say, have the... Uh, domineering stance, which increases the integration speed a little further. If you wish to. So I guess e Eastern Desert, Memphis, and Upper Egypt should be left alone. So yeah, forget that idea of integrating Upper Egypt. You'll never get it. Unless you have higher diplomatic reputation and among other things and possibly a few innovations that relates to faster integration speed hold on Head over there. Blockade their fleet. Good. The old governor is dead. We need someone who's less corrupt. Because I see a lot of corrupt people around here. Too many of them to my liking. It'll be the Hebrew man here. He's just. And uh, this will prevent a rebellion. Along with the harsh treat policies we decided to put on. So, it's been averted. Guess we're coming to back you up after all. Get your positions. I'll be there. No roads, so pick it up. <sighs> the Barkett family, the second most prestigious family in all of Arabia. I know what to do with you. going to be a bunch of tag alongs. You might as well. It's better than nothing. But I cannot integrate the smaller entities. Because it's like, yeah, we'll get them in easy, but they'll be landlocked. And it can't sustain itself. And be prone to provincial rebellions. So we can't bring them in unless we... And we can bring them in here, but we'll do that as soon as the war starts. And you're wondering, well what about those two? Because you got South Phoenicia and it can't sustain itself. I mean, if there's going to be any provincial rebellion from up there... We can take care of it with these. They'll probably take care of that for me. So, rebels win. For once. It's no longer Morian anymore. It's the Bugda Empire. Ran by the Balika Dynasty. Kuru Vedic. New power has risen. Though the morning decline will still be with them. 
The mod's gone into revolt again. This one is prone to rebellion, but it's kind of stable. Again. One second. Get rid of that. Here comes the uh, monthly experience. Oh, there's some experience for you. Because we know what we're going to get exactly in our next tradition. You're building a port for yourself? Nice. All the more reasons why we got to integrate you in. In position. Drill briefly. And get ready to march. Again, that'll keep them busy for a while. Winner, don't get alarmed. As much as I would like to get more political influence, and we'll turn that to a metropolis, too. Oh, and speaking of metropolises, Tylos, this is the other metropolis that we have now a metropolis island. Which, despite the winter it's going to need some you know it's going to need some grain so now we have the full port get him a granary because due to its location of how it would sustain itself Make that a second tier fortress as well, just to show how important this place is. Throw some grain in there. Since the Magda Empire is no longer beating itself up. Never starve again in order for it to be, to be sustainable. Encourage trade through that. innovations what I'd like to have. Oh yeah, I remember. I'm supposed to go down this way. Okay. Naval movement speed up. Another capital import route and import value goes up. And when another innovation is about to come soon, get this. When another one comes, get that. Which will be more building. Uh, more city building slots in Mariaba. Not capital. We're more economic focused. Get me a marble for less tyranny. There'll 
the alarms. It's, it's the winter. What the hell do I want? The research points isn't going to increase anymore. But I think another commercial district will do. In fact, I might as well build more commercial districts. But since we have so much manpower, you might as well do that. Conscription camps. decision. Wait for the winter to be over. Now it costs less to um, enact whatever law you may choose, so... Like, say, if I want... Uh, Hey, there's a way to get a little bit faster integration speed. Like, if you want this, like, normally it would cost 15, but no. It's, this is reduced to now. A little bit faster integration speed while increasing diplomatic relations. And a subject opinion? I could care less. They'll always be happy with us, no matter what we do. Even if we get away with it. And we often have high stability. You know what? Go ahead! The mighty shall look upon our works and despair. And we no longer have the penalty for relations over diplomatic limit. So I decided to spend a political influence on that. It's a good investment. And it would also make the integration a bit faster. Wait one month for the change to go into effect. At least it cut down a 30 years for Upper Egypt to be integrated. So not all hope is lost. And we get some stability back up. As it was. Now go back. Look. Just throw a bunch of grain in there and you'll be fine. Just add a few more granaries so we don't get... So we don't get an event of possible starvation. After everything I built for over there. And we can integrate you in. Let's begin. Which also means it's time for war. Moreau will be the main objective. We already have a trade for Kush. Go we'll get him. Let's move out. Oh. Increase the pay for the armies. So they'll have more morale. And I got more tricks up against them too. I think it's about damn time that we start completing these tasks. That's been there for the longest time. Let's just complete all of them. The traditional homelands of the Tessan. Over there. And the Jadid's tribes must be brought under our authority. We cannot allow the fuse. 
fierce romance and free reign into the tyranny of Arabia. I am going to complete all this just to stack up the morale of armies for the next 120 months during the course of the war against Kush. Our Arabian forces have managed to penetrate the interior of Arabia, driving out the Tasman levies that fought like devils to keep to their homes. Rabia is rugged, touched by his valiant attempts to our distant kinsmen to protect their way of life, has made a point to remember to sacrifice these heroic warriors while praising our own force for what they We acknowledge that these honorable warriors and salute their faithfulness. It's been suggested that we tap into the reserves of the Tasman warriors that we've conquered. Their strength and fighting traditions can be joined of our own, creating an unstoppable army. The traditionalists of our country do not wish to see this happen, it must be said. So, Arabia will have permanently have integrated desert wars, so this will hurt our integrated culture happiness while increasing our combat bonuses in oasis, desert hills, and in deserts. So we fight better in the desert than ever before now. Our campaigns against Tazan revealed a frightening weakness with our own forces. Although our men were better equipped, the Tazmite levies took advantage of our local terrain by executing devastating tactics that are currently unknown to us. But this will change, realizing that we could learn a thing or two from the subjugated. Ravia has approached some of these former generals and asked that they would be willing to train our own levies in these specialized techniques. Although some Arabian tribal elders have been muttering about the so-called unionization um, of our heroic army, our fighting men are thrilled to be studying how to wage war in the desert hills. This will only improve our military. Ignore the pessimists among us. In the northern desert cities. While many imagine that Arabia is a desert wasteland, there are many oases that are scattered among the dunes, and these have, over time, grown into powerful cities. We cannot allow there to be any resistance to our rule, so these cities must fall. And we done did. In the past, our levies ventured farther from home than they ever been, conquering the crossroads that are found in Arabia, and added these faraway places to the ever-growing Arabian hegemony. We have taken the trade cities that sat along these roads, famed for gorging themselves off of travelers like ticks on the belly of a camel. But never again! Proud Donata and Juba have fallen, and our mighty sons have been laid low. They've become used to these changes of time. They always do. And we have been fortifying the caravan huts. Donata is a supremely important city for it controls the crossroads that the caravans frequent. We must make signs of permanent presence in this region known by fortifying these trade routes. Merchants and travelers working their way through the dusty crossroads often make for the safety of Donata's walls, knowing that the promise of hot food and a warm bath to wash off the desert sand are among the least of the pleasures to be found in a fortified city. Because Arabia has practically guaranteed that no one can travel through the region without its explicit permission, what was once known as a lawless stretch of land, a stretch of road, home to bandits that attacked from the dunes, has become a place of safety and security for all. Investing in the fortifications was a wise decision indeed. Now, in Donata, increase local fort defense, fortified structure capacity up, and lessen in the combat with. That would keep the Parthians at bay, should they ever attack this way. Meanwhile, our levies could either follow the crossroads or make the trek to the interior of Arabia. One thing's certain, regardless of route, our armies march to Amana and its rich trade ports. There are many cities and towns in the, in the lands of Amana, and some are very old indeed, rivaling our own home in Maribel for prestige. Rabia had once thought that these ancient citadels would put up a stronger fight for their freedom, but this is not to be. In the end, their forces fell like so many others before them, all for the greater glory for the Arabian nation. 
We're just basically retelling old tales of our victories past. So that's plus 15% for the oratory advance. You'll see it jump up. See? Like that. Meanwhile, the time has come to test our armies against the forces of Geha. We can put against ours. We will not rest till our soldiers have taken a wealthy island of Talos for ourselves, which is now a metropolis these days. Rabia Zraga had honestly expected more resistance from the guards, having heard stories of the military prowess, but in the end, they felt just like so many others had before them. One of the greatest prizes claimed by the victorious armies is the Isle of Tylos. This fabulously wealthy port island will soon become one of the most important Arabian outposts in the Sinus Pesicus. The cities of Mesopotamia and Pesis will be next. That jumped up the advances a bit. It's a metropolis now. Beautiful. One kingdom for one people. For are we not all united under one banner? So Arabia is now truly the king of Arabia, despite back here on 66 BC. This would increase the country's civilization level, ups the monthly stability, and increasing the population assimilation everywhere. Not on a provincial level, but everywhere. So you'll be seeing more Sabians in the future faster. A new star can be seen in the firmament. One that blazes with the intensity of a thousand burning suns turns to shine brighter than the sun itself. This moment was foretold eons ago by desert seers, blessed with the gift of prophecy, the formation of Arabia, a kingdom of triumph uh, against all others. All glory to Arabia, we shall never fail. And in 180 days, a land of vast antiquity, with a reputation that casts a long shadow over the centuries, is just beyond our fingertips. So we'll be spending some political influence for that, while we gain claim for all of Mesopotamia. For a potential future war against Parthia. But now let's focus on here, on the short term. They, they want this. Deploy the fleet. Hunt those bastards down. Cavalry forces get there and defeat their navy. We need you to come over there. The North African campaign has begun. Very 
increase their levies. They've been planning this. You know, we have this fort over here. So, remember their main objectives over there. You're not going to participate in the Kush war again. So, we got a couple of things to do now. So, that means I may have to withdraw a few of the armies. And we know Kush is a much tougher opponent than Carthage is, to be real honest. And there is no room to stop them. This is Carthage's time for revenge. It's Carthage and Carthage alone. And you know, since it's a defensive war, um, I believe that we would be getting a bit more military experience out of this. So they have over 50,000 plus soldiers ready to march on through Saranaika. With what level of defense force have they, they have? And they're ready to advance on all fronts. My god, my god. Never imagined that this would be happening. But it's a real test of our resolve. Kush and Carthage together is basically a, almost a near equivalent to, well, the state of Parthia right now. <laughs> but still. Main objective, keep them away from there. Find their navy and hunt them down. Want you to go pick up our guys from here. They're going to be the first ones to encounter the uh, Carthaginian. They need to go behind enemy lines. Because we know their mass of humanity is already in the front line. But we need to know who else is in the back and see if we can hit them from behind. You are the long range desert group. And I think that. Well, we need you to get into friendly territory because there's room to give you more horse archers. And based on those number of supply trains with two, that you were able to have enough food to get behind them and reach the Kothadash. Let's be honest, I think we need more horse archers and two more light cavalry just to get a nice number of ten. So, more emphasis on horse archers. Bring one more supply train cohort, then it'll last much longer um, behind enemy lines. Do some reconnaissance, and if you see their fleets that are on their ports, in which we do have the navy, navy range to support this if we can find them. I want you to get in there, kick them out, and we'll defeat them. But quite honestly, the only safest place we could put you there is over here. Then you gotta, as long as they don't attack um, uh, Jog Bob, and you can begin your work. Just try to slip your way in. And that's gonna be the way to do it. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a two, possibly three part of a war. 
Kush will be the main focus now. Yeah, the army of Punt here, the road workers. But unlike the last war, at least we know how to fight better in deserts now. I don't think Carthage can fight well in desert. And since you're the one with the siege engineers, siege engineers, the engineers that they build work in, siege work as well, siege craft, road building, all that, you can name it. I think they too must pull back. If I'm willing to pull one army back from the front line, it'll be you. Our Hebrew hammer here. Our man. Although he's a bit depressed, but he needs to stick around for this because, again, Kush is a tougher enemy than Carthage is based on experience. And as well as... Stop right there. Yeah, no, keep going. The military tech is higher than of Carthage. We can easily defeat Carthage on land. But on land, Kush is tougher because they got elephants. We don't. But for now, we are proceeding with caution. Head over there. You fall back. Want you to go to you? Go pick up them. We need to get to friendly territory. Real quick. Now proceed with caution. And if the war gets desperate, I fear that we may have to resort to using our levies from other places, like there, there, and there. So they can form together and just basically just form their own defense forces. Especially with the sheer size of my levy. Okay, new priority. Expand the legion. Of Canaan, if you can. So, you can add about nine. So, it'll be two, one, and then heavy emphasis on horse archers. Plus six. We could definitely do some damage behind enemy lines. Sometimes wish we have better ones. But I think we have our near equivalent because this man here, he's getting old. He's not what he used to be. So, at least we found our suitable replacement. He's Gerhan, but he'll do. He's a wrong culture, but as I said, he'll be a valuable successor. I wish we had time to get some food and all that, but you know, we need you. We'll depart once we once they're here. So it'll be over 31,000 strong that will be defending our side. So they're advancing already. While at the same time, it's like they will take their main objective, which is in Menelaus. At the same time, like when they try to advance all the way to Alexandria, they're gonna have to get through this fort first while we're trying to build more fortresses here, given the importance of this situation. So, for safety reasons, we want them to be 
in Alex Gandarea. So we're going to be heading off to. I don't know if it's possible I may pull back a few more. But that's risky. It's just they decided to take advantage of us. We know they want it. Some plans back, but even Max Roddy, they never held Mamrika. It's just they want a revenge. This is a more revenge for what we did to them, one would think. But at least they're a non factor now. And thank goodness that this is happening while Parthia is in revolt. Because <laughs> had Parthia joined in on the party, I'm basically screwed. but I fear they're probably already behind us. Attack there or there, anywhere. Two for it, so this is going to require more manpower. We'll meet up with you soon. Don't worry, Abrigib's got this covered. And we built roads for them to use. They enjoy them. What I will not enjoy is that they're using the road that we built. <laughs> and there's a mass of humanity out there. Damn good mercenaries. He's depressed. He's got an infection. Let me help you out with that. We got a damn good doctor for you. Okay. Now get over here. He's got archers, horse archers, and war elephants. That was a good move. Although we don't like to bring more mercenaries, but every little bit helps. Especially some of an extremely high martial. I'm only doing this for the popularity. Oh, just get it from here. They just begun. One of our main objectives over here. What if we can somehow defeat them over and over again? Okay. We lost three ships. I think that was the main Carthaginian Navy we just ran into, and I missed a major naval battle. 
They lost 61 ships. <laughs> they lost 61 ships. They had troops on them. They were transporting someone, and it's a good thing we caught them. We caught them. So we lost three triremes for this. And mind you, our fleet doesn't have Liberians anymore. Well, we got 33 of them. Theirs was a little son, ours was a little 11. Hey, you need a sick treatment as well. We need you. Well done, man. They're going that way. So we were hunting for the enemy fleet and we found them. And we found out they were transporting an army. They were going somewhere. Well, we stopped them. And you know we have that ability to repair those ships at sea, although risky. Which, that repair can be approved upon. When the prestige gets up. Which, of course, you can only do that. But, remember, it costs political influence and money. So you're gonna need a lot of it. And you know what? Deploy this fleet as well. It's gonna take a few years or so. So they need to be deployed as well. As reserves. Get them to Alex Gandaria as well. Because Parthia is not a threat at the moment. Knowing that the course of the war will, will continue is... It will be concurrent with Parthia's revolt. So Parthia is not a threat to us. To our Eastern Navy. So our Eastern Navy must join with the Western Navy. The siege continues. I want you to look out for for where their fleet's going. We need to track them down. We found them again. They decide to drop them off on this island. Meanwhile, to the two rivers, the vision espoused by Rabia could not be any clearer. The final proclamation of our entrance onto the world stage. What better way to announce our ascendancy than, take, than the taking of Mesopotamia? The idea of our armies marching into um, Iberius is a thrilling one. And the more that Ravius has thought about this, the more he's convinced that there could be no other way. We must go to the land of the two rivers and seize it. Our accomplishments has led us to the moment at the purpose of history. So we have an entire claim on the and yet, despite all this, we had a bad tactic. But we still beat them. That could explain why we lost a few ships on our end. But they decided to drop off their navy. Over there. And we caught them out there. They probably knew this navy is going to be lost. And when their navy is lost, it'll take a long time for them to repair. Because they're all... Morale is low, and there's a high likeliness we're going to capture a lot of ships. <laughs> and more. So, yeah. You can clearly see some of them have bad generals. <laughs> and since they're in the middle of a dust storm, that's going to hurt their attrition a, a bit. And you know we we plan on integrating um, Saranaika in a few years. Well, 20 years time or so. So 
this place must fall first before we can engage them on land. Unless that's up to you guys. Because they, uh, they're not that scary. Build more roads and then... Yeah. Get this one. Let's do everything we can to expand the borders. Reduce the war score cost. And you know, when we beat back Carthage, they're gonna pay dearly for this. Because we do have claims to these territories, and we want them. And if we're lucky, maybe we can get Kodadash um, itself. So that way, they will not have their benefit of that anymore. Meanwhile, major naval battle here. They're going to be losing a lot more ships, and they lost them all. They lost them all. All 154 of them, and we captured even more Liberians and Triremes. So these two levees here that came from uh, Vitinza, which is um, over there, which with them having a large number, I think they have Tertanians as probably one of their um, integrated culture, unless that's coming from Punix themselves is the reason why they have such massive community there. Stick with us, Admiral. Their navy is gone. So we've knocked the navy out of the war. So they will play no role in this um, early and middle stage of the war, I can imagine, in terms of troop transportation. So you all did your proper jobs. But now um, I want you to go home. Get yourselves rested. Enjoy your victory. Rejoice. Breach. We may have to cut down the numbers of ships to disband because it's way excessive. Look how many are there. Look at the elephants they have. See what we're dealing with. We have 40. We have 60,000 men plus mercenaries deployed in this front line. And I think that maybe a good possibility we may have to deploy the mercenaries send them to the western desert because our friendly forces are in retreat and we got to figure out ways how to deal with the Carthaginians because they will not be able to transport troops anymore by ship instead they all have to go through by land and remember the main objective Moro, we must take it. And we gotta defeat the Kushan force Kushite forces numerous times. Because none of them have good generals to speak of. Come on, fall. Then we so that way we can start fighting against them. No. Sorry. He's been maimed. Keep it going. Lost his martial liberty, still formidable. So what are they gonna do? Throw their bodies at us? We lost visual. Are they coming over? We 
your gun. Get to stepping. Because we gotta engage one of them in combat. I see. Wait, yes, you have the gout. Well, since you are part of the Legion of Cain, anybody's a member of it? You were eight, now you're nine. Well, he has no charisma, so he can't get popular with the troops. <laughs> Makes me want to laugh at this. Laugh in a situation. That is mainly infantry. All heavy infantry and some light infantry. Easy pickings. Right on. Let's go. And um, I want you to Get rid of those two. Disband them. Slightly reduce the maintenance and also need you to go faster. You'll be deployed over there. And the purpose for that is, is that we may have to withdraw some of the men uh, from the front line and help with the defense here. I'm willing to sacrifice these territories so it'll be occupied by the enemy. And then they'll get down here. Because they hell bent want this. And probably will not stop until they head to Libya. And eventually head there. And also would want to go down there as well. And in the meantime, advance. Fight against these guys over there. Oh, they're coming in. <laughs> we have a stronger army, higher morale, better quality. They got a lot of archers. Horse archers, light cavalry, and war elephants. All the more reasons why we need to get the stepping. Because they're going to be throwing a lot of bodies at us. I hope we have the right tactic for the job. Let's go for deception. Hope this is the right move. Slow down. At least some of you are going to make trouble. Well, meanwhile, we're riding hard. And we're going to defeat them because it's all infantry, no cavalry support. And this will be an easy day for our horse archers. So light cavalry cannot do much against the heavy infantry, but horse archers, they can. Hope they don't use phalanx or skirmishing, but since it's all infantry, unlikely. That's my prediction. What you're gonna hear is if we get blocked by these two fortresses here, because this area was a this was a friendly fortress, and I fear that um, we may have to deploy. Looks like you're gonna be our secondary transport fleet since there's no enemy ships to stop us. Like, if we can't get through there, deploy our cavalry forces, bypass everybody, land here, and do damage. Slow them down. 
the hell are you, Spartans, going? Well, meanwhile, our eyes on here. Pick the right move. It was a two-day battle, and they all just charged at us, and we just mowed them all down while taking light losses, which is quite possibly the single most one-sided battle I have ever seen. They have destroyed their own army for crossing a major river, which is to be fair in their defense, went up against our crippled mercenary captain that we bought off of them, who was of neurotic origin. <laughs> and, uh... I'm stumped. <laughs> it's like, yes, he's bad at everything. <laughs> it's just, yes, they have every right to come over there and fight for the defense. Not to mention they picked a bad tactic and we picked the right one. <laughs> and we just... On to them piecemeal. There's no better way of describing it. This makes our Upper Nubian campaign much easier. And we are dead set to be taken to that city. So, head to Thana while you're at it. Actually, they're rethinking it now. They probably want to go take a fort or something. Or head to Aksum. Whichever way works. So now Kush has just made himself defenseless for that. Huge military blunder. Meanwhile. Our road only takes as far as sea when we stopped building towards well, Jagbo. But keep in mind, we fight better in deserts now. And in oasis too. So advantage us. So we'd like to gather more food, but we gotta go. I can't. Money's going elsewhere. It's the income that's been reduced. There's the Legion of Upper Nubia. I want you to gauge them. They're a smaller force. Well, meanwhile, you are ailing. You're a tough man. You're a conqueror. And we have a gout. What's your power base? Seven. Oh, he's well. So I'm switching. You switch the command. This is your new commander you ought to report to now. He's a suitable replacement. Instead of that person Zoroastrian. Do not engage the Carthaginian forces yet. We're waiting for the others. You are the transport fleet of this part. You ought to make repairs while we send our fleet back to withdraw one or two units away so we could defeat um, Kush by, again, take all of Upper Nubia, which requires control of all of these areas, which I don't know if it could be done, especially with such high aggressive expansion that we would get out of that, before we will definitely commit to the Western Desert Campaign, and 
this is one of the earliest actions since the action over the Mediterranean um, just at, at the battle just outside of Yemena which saw the complete destruction of the Carthaginian Navy which will take a while for them to all rebuild before we can deploy our fleet again these number of triremes the hell split them in half split them in half and get rid of half of them Get him back in here. Okay. We did that to reduce... You know, to reduce maintenance. I'm trying to be smart here. Now our first official action... Western Desert Campaign here. Here in Jogbo. They have a much lower morale, and our horse archers will mow them down. Not to mention the money's going elsewhere. We have to get on our money. He needs some more law. That would drive them out. See too if you can cause trouble down there. There is no fort there, but at least we can occupy part of that. But of course, that fortress is in the way. We're gonna make them run. Because of the upkeep, uh, where this war is gonna go at this point. Get the money. Because combat will be intense and maintenance is just gonna be. Woo boy! We'll end this episode soon, which will obviously be ending in a cliffhanger. Engage this army in particular, the rest are gonna get away. Nope, we're gonna get all of them. Nope, some got away, so we're engaging with the main one. We don't see anyone else beyond there. Because, again, we remarked the mass of humanity moved up there. They're going to take the capital, which is pretty well fortified. It'll take them a while. Hopefully this will buy us enough time to build our fortifications for Alex Scandaria because I panicked. To be honest. I panicked because we realized the huge number of troops it would require, and it would require everyone here to defeat them. That's why I believe we should begin a slow withdrawal when the uh, war definitely goes our way. And with them making a mess of it. Go where you want to go. Keep them distracted for us. And meanwhile... Avalanche and Gondar? There's snow up there? An avalanche hit Gondar cause a great damage to life and property. The roads are impassable due to the sheer amount of snow has fallen. We heard reports that the local infrastructure has been damaged until Gondar is built. Not many will want to live or work there. Not far away there's recently been another avalanche. Maybe they are connected. If people start to believe that these lands are cursed, no one will ever want to live there. What is causing these avalanches? 
It is said the vibrations may declench one. The cries help us to be considered. Made our souls rest in peace. Oh man. A natural disaster in the middle of a war. We beat him. Now we're coming over. Gondar did suffer hit by avalanche. The mine stayed. Oh, what did you get yourself into? You wild bunch. Against infantry and cavalry, and there's gonna be more infantry and cavalry, and we got uh, even more over there. You need to withdraw right now. We defeated 5,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. But stop. You're not gonna win this one. You know, they're gonna be there on 8th of June, and we can engage them on the 5th. We could defeat them because they got a terrible general. And we know that these guys are going to come catch us. <laughs> these are bold actions you're taking. They call you the same. Abule, you are taking bold action. That is not really the purpose of the army here. When the going gets tough, you need to withdraw back to Alex Scandaria. What the hell are you men doing? We can get away with them. We'll be there on the 5th of June. The cavalry skirmish isn't working, but they got a terrible general. They'll be there on the 8th. Let's see, three days later. One, two, three. said disengage you're not gonna be defeated by them you need to get the hell out of there plus you are not in a position because they got far more numerous uh, light infantry although our cavalries can defeat their many light infantry but <laughs> you got to choose your battles you're outnumbered out here You've destroyed an entire army of theirs, and then you defeated another who, who was a terrible man. Why well, you got this one who's who's a bit decent, but they have larger number of cohorts. Pull back. Swing around. Let's go. If they can successfully escape. Oh yeah, we got them too. Move up. Well, this place hasn't fallen yet, but it will soon. It's part of his own, not Saranaika. Now, can you swing around them? Because they're going to chase you. <laughs> if they, if they somehow feel like they are indeed going to catch you, you need to jettison the. Supply trains. I said, do not engage them in combat. We need you to disappear like ghosts. <laughs> and they will. <laughs> We're gonna get away with them. We swung around. They can't catch up. We are gonna get away with it. Later in second August. Yep. They're gonna get away with it. You know what? For the next action, which will be for the next episode, get these guys over to Siwa. New plan. Turn to Siwa. We 
will get away with it. They actually stopped tracing. <laughs> That's a hell of a way to end the episode. The arm, the Legion of Canaan, also known as the Long Range Desert Group, as I call them, is in reference to the North Africa campaign of World War II of the purpose of that military unit. <laughs> And we model on that as the antiquity equivalent of it by using horse archers and light cavalry only because of its movement speed and supply trains to make it last longer behind enemy lines. So the accents here in Jagbob and in this part of Nasamonia, that was a very notable action by you and you need to get back to Siwa to rest and recover before we can engage him again. Well, meanwhile, the War of Kush continues. So, there's a lot more war to come in the next episode. So, we'll see you in the next one. But until then, so long for now.